Uh, we have another interview. Yesterday we had Mr. Jack Metcalf, uh, and today we have another special guest, uh, Mr. Sal Zizzo. How's it going, Sal? Good, good. If there's anything that's going to come out today, it's that the sound quality is going to be great. So, that's uh, for sure, man. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, you know, AirPods are, are are good, but man, you, you got <laughs> you, you got yeah, quite the setup, and yeah, love to hear it. Uh, uh, but yeah, man, uh, just want to just talk about how how how's life you know we we talked a little bit with jack i've talked with a couple of other players and uh seen you guys on social media um doing workouts through zoom and just meeting you know obviously it's you know weird times not right now and probably uh player professional soccer player chef nanny uh teacher probably uh <laughs> how, how's life right now man uh it's, it's pretty good i mean it's it's hard though i mean my kids are are really young right now they're uh my oldest is four she's turning five at, at the end of the month so she wasn't in kindergarten or anything yet so um <clears throat> i haven't had to do too much teaching other than just the typical uh fatherhood between the ages of one and four uh but i have another two girls as well so three young girls running around the house uh life's pretty crazy um trying to stay in shape you know going for runs every uh, probably three times a week and then doing those zoom workouts twice a week um yeah and then just been doing a, a few stuff with uh my podcast obviously and um a few other things uh you know on social media oh yeah and that's great you know <clears throat> the fact that you guys are still reaching out because you know the loyal was a great success at launch and it was a great time we got out there um and to have something like this just stop everything in its tracks you know it, it has to be tough but uh, i think what you guys are doing staying engaged with the community uh with the radies children's hospital um campaign that you guys have going great. yeah and so you know you're you're a san diego guy so you know how important those type of things are for for us you know we're, we're fans too so mm -hmm. um from san diego you know thank you guys for keeping that up and uh uh we welcome any any more social media you know shenanigans to come on up yeah uh, uh actually yeah tonight we're so i i also do a podcast as you've talked about a little bit but uh we actually have will farrell coming up that we're going to interview tonight so uh that'll be pretty cool um yeah and then you mentioned the the radies thing that's going to be um you know really cool to be able to raise money for them you know they they rely on um the the charity event i think it's like the jogathon or or um, some type of you know event that involves you know people being around each other a lot and you know the fact that they can't really do that uh you know they're going to rely <clears throat> heavily on uh stuff like this that comes from us so um it's really going to be really key, uh key and uh i urge you guys in the future to uh, follow uh, my social media and donate to Team Nate. Only Team Nate. Actually, you can donate to everybody, but Team Nate is the we're one. Team you, Nate you all the wanna... way right now. Oh, are you? All right, so, perfect, uh, perfect. We, we, we were waiting to see what you had to say. Um, I don't know if you know this. Uh, Landon Donovan is actually my best friend. Oh, is he? From the past two, three months since I met him. Okay. Um, but you know what? He hasn't asked me personally. Jack did, and now you're letting me know. So you know what? I think two balls and a mic are gonna go Team Nate. Yeah. I like that. We we got your guys' endorsement. So spread the word. Absolutely. For sure, man. And yeah, because we uh we we've been both in there. Uh Chiba over here broke a nail and went uh, to children's hospital. Broke a wrist. <laughs> uh, I broke a femur. Okay. I broke an arm early uh in my life and I was in San Diego. I'm sure I, I was there as well. I can't remember which hospital I was at, but yeah, so I mean uh being a veteran in the team, obviously uh a lot of younger guys and you being the veteran, the captain of the team, what are some of the things you kind of want to teach them with your experience or kind of with your leadership skills? What What is something you want to instill in them? Well, I want to, I want to help them. Right. I mean, for, for some of these guys, their, their goal isn't necessarily uh, to stay on San Diego loyal the, mm -hmm. the rest of their life. You know, a lot of them have aspirations to go on to play the MLS or, or um, even further. So um, for me, kind of my role, as being an older guy is, you know, for one to kind of like guide them the way to kind of do that. Um, and also just, you know, be a good friend and be kind of like that link to, to the coaches. And if they have a problem, they can come talk to me. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just there as, as a resource to kind of help them uh, grow as people and as players um, so that, you know, in the future, when, when the time comes, if they're ready to move on that, um, you know, you kind of can instill some of these um, 
good professional um, habits. Definitely. Yeah. And that's something that we've heard, you know, same thing with Landon, you know, that's Peppa the uh, teaching that he wants to give to uh, the younger guys. And, you know, it's uh, across the board, you can see that there's just a uniform, um, I guess, goal for Loyal. And, and, you know, it's just for the growth of the player, for the growth of the team, for the growth of the sport, just, and that's important for um, just the sport itself. Have you taken any players yet down to your favorite spots here in San Diego? And if so, <clears throat> where have you guys? So, so my family has a, a few restaurants in Little Italy. And uh, early on, we took the team to uh, one of the restaurants called Nona's. Um, it's, right, it's right by like the Little Italy sign um, over there. And we just kind of had a team dinner. And then, you know, after we, we had a few drinks and, and whatnot. Um, so, so that was pretty cool to kind of, you know, go out and bond and get to know everybody. But I will say like, you know, having been together for, I think it was a little over a month before um, it all kind of got shut down. Uh, we had a pretty tight knit group and, you know, a lot of us have stayed in contact, uh, obviously through text messages and whatnot. So um, that side of things, you know, couldn't have been better. Um, obviously, yeah, things shut down, but I don't see it being like something that's going to hinder us in the future. I think one thing that could benefit us is that we just have a very, very deep team. Definitely. You know, we have a lot of guys. I mean, you saw the second game, we switched out, uh, you know, 90% of our lineup and um, came away with the win. And so, you know, if we're having to play whatever it is, if we have to play three games in a week uh, for the rest of the season so that they can squeeze in all the games, I, I think that's going to be a huge benefit for us. Yeah, and that's huge, especially for a USL team. Um, to have such depth is, is huge, like you said. And, um, and to have it as starting uh, a club, you know, it, it, it's amazing. Yeah, um, we do want to take it take it a little back, maybe not yeah. present. Uh, we kind of uh, heard in the older interview uh, somebody gave you the nickname Fast Boy. <laughs> we want to see like if there's any truth in that, or who gave you that nickname, or how did that come along? Uh, Fast Boy, you just, you said. So uh, I will say so early in my career, um, and I mean early, so like UCLA days, um, youth national team days. I mean that was pretty much like my main attribute i was i was like the the known as the fast guy on the team uh fast with the ball um and that was kind of you know that that always set me apart from everything else i did and i think a lot of the good players in the world have that one thing that they do really well and for me it was that it was my speed um when i unfortunately um you know i've had a lot of knee injuries uh in my career and and now being 33 years old uh, i've had to adapt and really change and fine tune the other parts of my game to really be able to survive throughout my career. Um, you know, you can only be, you know, 22 years old and, and at your peak uh, fitness level for so long. So uh, I would say, you know, when I was 26 and started getting older, uh, from then on, I, I had to really, you know, start getting a little bit better technically on the ball and, and be a better player in possession and just change up. And I think that coincided with me kind of changing positions, right? Cause I was a, I was a winger. I got in line. I used to take on guys, literally just kick it by them and run. And now it's like, you know, that's a very minuscule part of my game, especially in the positions that I play now. Yeah. And you can see that it's the highlighted in that assist you gave to Freddie Adu. Yeah. Uh, back in the day. Poland. Yeah. Back in the day. It was great. That, that, that's the type of player uh, I, as a goalkeeper, I wanted my team. I used to be a, a goalkeeper until the knee injuries too. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but no, that's the type of player I want. Player that just goes for the ball, doesn't stop until he gets it or fouls yep. it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just starts a play and finishes it in a goal. That, that's the type of player. But funny enough, you say UCLA because we were going to talk about UCLA. Uh, beautiful campus. I've been there a couple times. Um, but I understand in 2006, uh, you faced in a final against uh, another UC, UC Santa Barbara. Yep. Uh, were you aware that Eric Avila, uh, I spoke to him the other day uh, and his uh, Instagram live a little bit. And I was like, did you guys know that he scored the winning goal? And, uh, and have you guys talked about this in the locker room? <laughs> he did say yeah. he might bring a championship ring along just to, just to show and tell a little bit. Yeah, no, I, <clears throat> at the time, yeah, it was devastating. And obviously um that was actually my last what collegiate uh soccer game um 
Yeah, I, I, I knew I've known Avi for for quite a while, being that he grew up in San Diego, and um, he actually played for uh, the first club that I played on, uh, which is a small club in San Diego called Crusaders. I think it's CSC now. Uh, yeah, randomly we've both like started at that club, um, and yeah, so I've known him since then. So this is what uh, when I we were like 12, 11, 13 years old. And uh, then he actually, yeah, he went on to residency um, and I just kind of stayed locally playing for clubs and um, he ended up, yeah, going to Santa Barbara. I went to UCLA. Uh, we played him a few times. I think we played him earlier that season and beat them like, I think it was two nothing. Um, Very important that you tell him that. Yeah, no, I, I always do. And then I make the excuse that we had to play on back-to-back -back days in like a blizzard in St. Louis uh, for the finals of the NCAA, which is crazy. Uh, so yeah, we had played the day before, uh, yeah, in like zero degree weather with snow pushed off the side, and then less than 24 hours later, we had to go play them uh, for a final. You know, and you know, I'm tw I'm 19, 20 years old. You're, you're, it's not easy to still play back to back days, you know, yeah. especially for a final. So, um, but yeah, they they beat us. They they played their game. They kind of you know took us off our our. Uh, you know, the type of team we were. So, um, yeah, credit to them. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a little bit of a fun rivalry. I like to kind of, yeah. kind of, you know, interesting that he omitted the fact that you guys played back to back and, and yeah. So. <laughs> and omitted, we probably beat them earlier in the year. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, someone who grew up in San Diego, I know you're aware a lot of fans in San Diego are, uh, fans of the Mexican soccer league and they have like their fans of Chivas, America, so many teams. Uh, I don't know if you ever hoped to play in the Mexican Soccer League or if you ever did, which team would you have uh, chosen to play for if you had the chance? I mean, <clears throat> so I'm I'm all San Diego through and through, right? So every time, what you know, when when I was starting to play, I think I think it was what what year did Tijuana kind of make it to the the, the top league? And was it like 2010 or, or yeah, around there? Yeah, 2010. Yeah, so like I had just come back or I had just came to the MLS around that time started hearing about it and whatnot and and always in my head was like that that that's like the the hometown team almost like for me you know yeah. so for me it was always if I had to play for one team it would probably be Tijuana just because of the proximity to San Diego and I would probably be living in the same place I'm living right now and mm -hmm. still being able to play for you know a top club in a in a top division yeah not a lot, not a lot of players that play for Tijuana they end up uh, living in San Diego instead of Tijuana. yeah Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Leandro Perez, Gonzalez Perez, who is the center back for Tijuana, uh, we played together at Atlanta United. So uh, we've been in contact, and he actually lives like five minutes from me. So uh, we haven't yet to meet up, but we were planning to before all the craziness happened. But uh, yeah, so yeah, we probably would be living in the same place. And uh, obviously, Tijuana's had a lot of success, and they've had a lot of crossover from players, you know, whether it be having Americans and having a lot of players that have played in MLS and then played over there. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we actually talked with Jack and uh, tried to convince him to go and come down with us for some tacos, and he said, yeah. so if you're down too, and uh, yeah. we'll, we'll make a little pilgrimage. When all this is, when all this is over. Yeah, what, let's do it. Taken care of and done. Um, but yeah, uh, so in Germany, I'm always fascinated when, you know, people that I know just go to other countries or just local San Diegans. Um, what's something that you um, kind of experience or, or things that everyday life in Germany that you wish that would be brought back to here to States or San Diego or just um, anything from the culture? Like, you know what, it'd be cool if uh, in, the, in the U.S. we started to do this or something. That yeah, <clears throat> I, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm pretty much like the opposite. I wish they would adapt or would have adapted a lot of the things that, you know, we had here, like on Sundays, you know, everything's closed over there. And I'm just like, wow. you know, as a young kid who's like learning to live on his own, uh, you know, when I'm running out of food on a, on a day, I'm not really thinking what day of the week it is. I'm just getting up and going to the grocery store and everything being closed kind of puts a damper on all that. Um, so that was something I wish they would, you know, implement, but you know, that they're, they're more, uh, family time and, and settle down on Sundays for the family, which is actually pretty cool, you know, when you think about it. And now that I have a family, it, it kind of um, resonates with me a little bit more. So um, that's something uh, I will say that the German bakeries 
um, is something that, that you can't really compare to here. Uh, you could go to these places and, you know, pick up a fresh loaf of bread and it would just be like the best bread you've ever had. So, um, <laughs> That was pretty cool. And then, you know, <clears throat> towards the end of my time there, I lived like in the city center, which is, you know, equivalent to living, you know, in downtown, yeah. um, but without the San Diego craziness of downtown. But um, that was pretty cool, too. That was a cool experience. Fastest you ever went on the Autobahn? On the Autobahn. Yeah, that's a good question. So I was driving to Berlin uh, one time uh, with another uh, teammate. Actually, he wasn't a teammate. It was another American who played with me at UCLA named Kamani Hill. And we were in my, I think it was just a BMW 3 Series. We were driving down to Berlin. And I, I don't know what it was translated to. I think it was like 100 and, I think it was like probably about 180 miles per hour. Wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> And, uh, yeah and i and it was honestly it was really dumb to be honest like the yeah. car was shaking and it was just like what what am i doing and i i immediately slowed down but yeah. like in america i think some of those cars are built with you know once you hit up to like 110 it like kind of shoots you back down yeah, uh, yeah the you know where in <laughs> germany they don't have that so uh yeah i think it was like maybe uh, yeah, i think it was like 180 uh maybe it was like one maybe it was one i don't know dude i think it was like 180 another another thing that's popping in my head is 140 so maybe it was like 140 which sounds more realistic 180 <laughs> a, bit, a bit crazy well, i, I want to see somebody go over 80 on a five traffic yeah north or south anywhere no, it was probably like 140 yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm a little ahead of myself saying 180 to be honest uh i know in an article back in 2006 uh you expressed that uh you're a big fan of michael owen uh so my question is what what is it about michael owen's game that kind of caught, caught your eye or that made you a fan of his so that's funny because so <clears throat> funny fact so I didn't like watch too much too much soccer like growing up like I wasn't like the biggest you know Premier League fan or whatnot I was kind of I grew up in San Diego and like in America so I kind of had like this NFL slash like Padres culture to me you know like I was all about the Padres the Chargers and soccer was just like something I was like athletically good at my body was kind of built for that you know I played freshman football but it wasn't like I didn't I knew I, my career wasn't in that right I mean I get hit one time and I'll, I'll be crushed you know uh, I did play high school baseball and I was quite good at it um, could have maybe gone far in that um, but uh, you know again I'm, I'm not I'm not like built to hit home runs I'm not like a power hitter so soccer just kind of suited me right mm -hmm. and um yeah, I, I wish I had watched a little bit more, but I was more like the guy that jumped on the, the World Cup bandwagons and yeah. mm, watched right. all the games then. And uh, so, like, honestly, when, when you say Michael Owen, it was just – it was he was just a player that, like, <laughs> maybe at the time was, like, having, like, a really good season or uh, yeah. or had just got done having a good World Cup or, or whatnot. So, um, yeah, I do remember him being, like, a very good player for England, but um, there's nothing that, like – kind of you know that I, that reminds me of him or or that i think yeah. about with him you know but yeah yeah there i mean yeah go ahead yeah, oh yeah sorry uh if you were to give like a say a top five of your favorite players um of all time who, who would be in that <clears throat> i mean so it'd probably be so growing up italian as well like uh, before playing on all like the youth U.S. national teams, I was all for the Italian national team mm -hmm. um, until probably 2002 was like the first World Cup uh, where I just was like all for the U.S. because I was starting to get into the soccer mm -hmm. um, side of things. And like, you know, uh, my uncles are like stubborn Italian guys who are like, no, Italy's the best. U.S. has no chance, blah, blah, blah. And so um, when U.S., did so well in 2002 obviously with Landon and, and Beasley and these like young guns come kind of coming through it kind of gave us all you know hope for the future and it was like me versus my uncles like I was just like all USA you know mm -hmm. um so like top five I mean uh you gotta like as far as like inspiring me or like uh being like you know one day I want to get to that level I mean Landon's in there for sure and just because of you know he's him being the the top American player that 
kind of, I looked at when I was young, like that, that's the guy I'd want to be like. And then, um, when I was very, very young, not knowing much about soccer, I mean, there was Roberto Baggio on Italy from like the 94 mm-hmm. world cup. Um, he, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was, that was kind of like the first, maybe even soccer player, like I knew about, um, yeah, then probably Landon. And then obviously like the modern guys, like, you know, Messi and Ronaldo, I think it's an interesting time that we're in that we get to see both of those guys kind of that can, when their careers are done, maybe be considered the best ever, like in the same conversation. So at the same, you know, time period. So um, I would say, yeah, that those two as well have to be in there. And then you hear about Maradona and Pele and, um, you know, I hadn't been in that, you know, life to hear about them, but uh, Maradona was like the god to really most Italians and Argentinians yeah. and yeah. So. No, yeah, I actually um, during and then uh, you had your arguments of 2002 and look, U.S. is coming up and then Italy goes and wins the 2006 World Cup. Yeah, and both starts. Yeah, and that and that's another funny story. You know, like I was all for the U.S. and then yeah, you know, I'd just been playing for my youth national teams. Uh, I think it was like U18s or yeah, this was 06. So. Um, yeah, been like almost, you know, starting to play like U twenties, I think it was, but right. Right. Cause Oh seven was the U 20 world cup. So, um, but I was like in my like Kappa, uh, Italian tight Jersey, like in little Italy, like jumping on top of cars when they won the world cup. So <laughs> there was also that side of it. Um, but yeah, no, like that was a, that was a really cool experience. No. Yeah. Cause, uh, I actually had, um, a couple of, um, I knew a couple of family members. Uh, my my dad was worked with uh, San Filippo family downtown, and yeah, you know they they were just going insane. Like I, yeah, I wish I wish I can feel. I that. wish I could experience that, man. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're Mexico, like in t- in in, in that yeah. that final, like I was in the, the like the front row of, of where they put the big screen in Little Italy, like right under the sign. Yeah, and it was just like ten thousand people like back, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just remember like. Yeah, seeing like the Zidane headbutt live and just like the reactions to everybody. And it was just like something I'll never forget. And then, uh, yeah, I have a lot of cousins and family all in San Diego who all support the Italian national team. So for everybody to like kind of be there in the same space and be cheering for them and then them to win in penalties and everyone going nuts. It was it was really cool. Must be nice, man. Can't relate, can't relate with Mexico, man. Yeah. Well, they, hey, their, their youth systems are. And they got Tata now, and I know Tata, so they'll, yeah. they'll get them straight. And see, but like, we're in a weird situation, at least I am, because um, my whole entire life, I've not been the biggest fan of Landon and the U.S. because of what they did to us. And right. I, I remind us the first, when I met him, I'm like, hey, Landon, how's it going? Uh, you have real estate in my nightmares. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's great to see the growth of the sport here in the U.S., but even then, as a Mexican fan, I've always kind of hesitated because that just means it's going to be big yeah. trouble for, for Mexico. And it's good because CONCACAF is going to be stronger yeah. uh, that way. Um, but I think the U.S. in a couple of years, they've always had enough to be a superpower. Do you ever think the U.S. will be a superpower? I, I sure hope so, man. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, years and years down the line. But, I mean, you look at some of the young talent they have and it's just like, come on. Like, why can't we, you know, get over that? that hump you know um i do wish we played more of like a pressing aggressive style especially with the the type of guys we have but you know i don't know if we'll ever be able to compete with like you know the spains and the in the germany's and the brazils of how you know they move the ball and you know that goes deeper that goes into like soccer being like i said like i grew up watching the nfl and baseball and it's just like for that to take over that sport where all the kids play every day on the playground and like just get up to go play soccer in the streets. It's not like that here, you know, and until it does, which it may never like, I don't know how we can compete with them at at a Toka Toka level. But like I said, on a fitness and like a pressing and like an aggressive style, I think we can compete with anyone in the world in that. And so I think we need to like kind of shift to having that mentality. And then of course, yeah, you need like those special talents to, be able to win at the international level against those teams but um i think first and foremost you kind of got to have that pressing style 
And I think the foundation has been laid out uh, here in the U.S., something that they didn't have um, a while back. It's, it's a process. And, um, you know, it's, it's things like this, like having local teams and, and people come out for soccer, even if it's MLS, USL, UPSL, NISA, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, there's just much more soccer happening. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I was asked, hey, come over from TJ and play over here. I'll give you new cleats, do this. Mm-hmm. But I didn't necessarily like the style of play over mm-hmm. here. Um, it's definitely yeah, it's also, different, uh, right? With the academies over here, they're pretty expensive as well. Yeah. I know. I yeah. Know, uh, I think Slapdan Ibrahimovic, he actually said, uh, like, the youth system in America is kind of messed up right now because it's really expensive for people to have yeah. their kids playing. Exactly. Game. And I don't think it's like that really in any other country. So, yeah, it's something that may never change and, and may hinder us. But, you know, you look at what sport is like that in, in the U.S. and you could you could say basketball is, is kind of like that. You know, guys just will go up, go to the playgrounds and go play pickup basketball and look, mm-hmm. we're, we're number one in the world. So, um, yeah, I just think it's something that may never change, but there's maybe ways around it. And I think one of the ways is to kind of change our, our approach. And if you look at the teams that – were successful like kind of when the u.s started kind of getting into it making world cups it was like this grit that we had about our team like you know like kobe jones with like mexico and like you know bloody bloody foreheads and just like this this grind about them and Mm -hmm. yeah for whatever reason you don't really see that now um with the u.s national team and i'm hoping some of these young guys as they grow and um kind of start to have a little bit of that mentality and it becomes a little bit more you know meaningful to play for the national team Mm -hmm. definitely and and that can only benefit just the region itself you know uh there's competition it just means that we're all going to get better and and that's that's kind of what we hope you know to to help and yeah you know i don't know if uh you you know uh what the what this whole two balls in a mic podcast uh, we're trying to do is get press passes for the world cup for 2026. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think 2026 is a, is a really cool thing that, you know, is, is helping us move forward as a country to kind of grow the game, right? That's kind of everyone's target goal. Um, as much as you can keep spreading the word. And then by 2026, you'll, you know, be flying and people are going to be calling you guys to, to get on your, your podcast. So well, that's kind of, I mean, that's the goal, right? Hopefully. Like right now we're living the dream. Uh, we're living the dream, having press passes for loyal. Yeah. Press passes for 1904. Just getting to watch both of them. Yeah. Bo- uh, both teams playing. I mean, I, I had to tell my my dad, hey, uh, I'll talk to you in a bit. Um, I'm having an interview with professional soccer players. <laughs> exactly. I'll, I'll <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's really cool to to be able to do this, and 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 the fact that you know, I feel like soccer players uh, as far as athletes here in the u.s are a little bit more open because we are trying to get eyes onto the sport we are trying yeah. to spread the word and and that's how it's going to grow just people knowing that there's avenues there's ways to just get out there maybe mm-hmm. not now yeah. maybe not now but, yeah um you know once everything hopefully gets back to normal soon and uh we'll start with this um just expanding soccer as I'm yeah i mean something i've always said that kind of is I think so true is just like when when a person has never been to a soccer game and and you can take them in person live one time Mm -hmm. most of the time they're hooked you know and so it's something that yeah it's just about spreading the word and giving giving it a chance and going to go check it out because a lot of people don't realize how fun it can be until they actually you know check it out no definitely because like I think it's the only sport where that's the opposite where like uh, football is sometimes more yeah NFL red zone on a Sunday, you have all the screens, all the action. Uh, whereas if you watch soccer on a TV, it's it's a lot of passing, technical. Yeah. You just have to understand it. But when you're there, you actually see that, huh, this isn't as boring. Yeah, you see the passion. Boring. You see how it looks way more aggressive live and faster live than it does on TV. Yeah, that's kind of me with baseball. I mean, I can't watch baseball on TV, that's but good. I've gone to yeah. Padres games. Like, I went to a Padres Giants yeah. game and just – yeah, you hear the crack of the bat, the way the ball's moving off the bat. It's just, it's just a lot more. You know, you, you appreciate it a lot more. Yeah. So, uh, what's the first thing you're gonna do once uh, we're allowed to get out of here, uh, of our houses and stuff? Like, once we can. I don't know. Out? So many things. I mean, I, I could hardly go out to dinner as it was with my three kids already. So, um, I don't know. Maybe go visit my parents. You know, more because they live really close. Um, 
yeah I, honestly i'm just looking forward to being able to like go out and practice and play games and just be with the guys i mean um you know it's great being being at home with the family but I, i've had that for quite a while now since so since i left atlanta i've been pretty much had a lot of family time so um it's great but i'm missing like that you know i want i want to go back into to usd at Torero stadium and, and playing those games it's crazy to think you know we'd be i don't know seven eight games in on the season already um so yeah i mean i almost feel like the next time we play at Torero stadium is gonna feel like another home opener or like you know so um yeah i'm just yeah I mean, i'm anxious to kind of just get going again really just this is my job i guess get get uh yeah. playing again you can't yeah. you can't really do do your job from home yeah yeah exactly yeah. right and then with podcasts, those sports right now, it's really hard to even get content out for our podcast. Yeah. But I know you, you mentioned that you got Will Ferrell uh, as a guest coming, so uh, pretty big celebrity. Uh, what tips would you give us, you know, like kind of like to land a big celebrity like that or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I would just say, <laughs> I would just say <laughs> use, use your avenues and your connections. Like, don't be like, oh, he'll never come on or, you know, like, uh, we had Benny, who's our co-host. I mean, he played at LAFC, so there's kind of his somewhat in right there. And then I think he just just texted the – I think it was one of the guys over there and was just like, oh, you know, we have this podcast, kind of downplayed it. Like, would, would he be interested in doing it? And he just was like, oh, yeah, like, my kids love your podcast. I'm sure he'll he'll go on and email him. Email him, and he's like, yeah. So, you know – it's as simple as that sometimes, right? I mean, you just have to ask. You you can't get anybody unless you ask. So, um, and which I think you know, you guys are doing a good job so far. So, yeah, just don't be afraid to to tap into to all kind of the avenues, and then as you grow, you'll be able to to start finding more people. I mean, he, um, great, huge celebrity. Um, but who's the white whale at this point? Who's who's one that you just have to like? You want to just get on? I mean, so so at to this point, yeah, Will Ferrell was is like the the big guy. Uh, we've to be honest, we've only tried and failed to get one person, and I wouldn't necessarily call it a fail, but we tried getting Zlatan mm -hmm. at the time um, when he was with the Galaxy, and he had mentioned that he was going to come on, and then it just kind of faded and. Uh, we didn't really pursue it after that, but um, I don't know. I don't know who, who is like kind of our ultimate goal to find. We're kind of just, I think we're at the point where like whatever is kind of in the media at that time, we're going to try and talk to that person who's kind of trending and, and see, you know, maybe they have a story that they want kind of set straight or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, and we're, it's, gr it's growing really well and we're just trying to kind of keep it going and just have fun with it. Oh, definitely. So then Hopefully we can be there with you guys and, and uh, yeah. collab a little bit later. Um, we asked Jack Metcalf um, a question where um, he was, he was like, okay, um, I don't know if you've sometimes in this quarantine, you've been watching a lot of Netflix, watching a lot of uh, shows on TV or movies. Uh, is there any time that you've ever looked at a movie or a role and you're like, you know what? I can do that. I can do that better. Is there a role mm. that you could say that you can take his answer was uh james, james bond. bond james bond yeah. <laughs> jack can't play james bond i'm sorry jack uh let's see oh man i don't know that that is a tough one i mean i wouldn't say like i i would i don't know that's a that's a really tough question um not really to be honest i wouldn't say there's a movie i mean these guys it, it, it'd be undermining them to say like, Oh, I could do that. You know what I mean? Like these guys work hard, I think harder than people kind of realize at what they do. Um, so I wouldn't say like comedy is such a hard thing to do yeah. and goes unappreciated sometimes. Um, yeah. And then drama is just another, you know, to be able to cry on command and be able to do certain things. So yeah, I, I don't think I'd be able to do a lot of things. I think I could do a lot of like uh, lip singing maybe, or like, okay. It's so, not so, like, uh, uh, what's a, what's a, the lip syncing show. Yeah. What's the, that? What's that show called? Else. Yeah. I would crush those. I would crush <laughs> those. I could go on and if somebody like created a dance and like some type of skit, mm -hmm. I could, I could do just as well as a lot of those guys for sure. What's a go-to if I, if I championship match against, um, uh, let's see, pick somebody, um, Selena Gomez, you're going up against Selena Gomez who's oh, wow. uh, doing Led Zeppelin. What are you doing? 
Oh man. What's your go-to? Jeez, I might do like a, like a Frankie Valley slash like Bee Gees type okay. right. kind of falsetto, like funny outfit, uh, old time song. I love it. I nice. think. I think. Or like a, or like a, or like late '90s, early 2000s, like boy band, and have to wear like some of the similar stuff that they had to wear at that time. Right. I, I like it. I also heard you say that um, maybe this is back in the day, but NSYNC was your favorite concert at the time. <laughs> There's the only so literally, I think it's still the only concert that I've ever been to. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, I don't even know, like fifth or sixth grade or something, and they came to the sports arena, I believe. Yeah. And yeah, I went there with with my cousins, and uh, yeah, that was a uh, that was pretty funny. So I'll just go down a couple of uh, stadiums that we've had here, like Sports Arena, um, or Petco, or Qualcomm, Jack Murphy, however you want to say it. Uh, best Padre game you've ever been to. I went to the, um, I think it was in 1998. So it was 1998 playoff game against the Houston Astros. Um, I remember that game. And I was, uh, I don't know what game in the series it was, Mm -hmm. but it was home. Um, They had put extra seats on the field. um, And I was in like these fold out white chairs. I think my dad had got them for for work. Mm -hmm. Um, Gave them to just me and my brother. And then he was sitting somewhere else. And, um, I think I remember, I don't, I think it was like David Bell from the Astros flight out to right field. Tony Gwynn caught it. And he, as he came jogging in, he tossed the, uh, ball to like the security guy. And then the security guy gave it to my brother and I, and we were just kind of like, what, like, <laughs> this is so cool. You know? And if you look at the ball, it just kind of says like, uh, you know, Padres versus Astros, whatever year it was, yeah. uh, 98. 98. Um, so yeah, that was that was pretty cool, and uh, obviously I remember that was with them that whole season as they as they went to the World Series and then got my heart broken and they got swept. We don't talk about that, man. Yeah, the Yankees are yeah. the enemy. And, and Game One in that World Series was going so well, and then I remember Mark Langston I think was pitching. He threw a strike against Tino Martinez, and they didn't call it. And then he hit a, like a grand slammer after that. that that's the that way. was the turning point. And I and I that sticks in my head like that one pitch that was a low fastball down the middle strike, and they called it low or whatever he called it. And then home run on like the next couple pitches or next pitch. I don't know. And then the game after that. And yeah, and then every game after that was just kind of demoralizing. I mean, but you know what? We still have those memories. We still have. <laughs> We yeah. still have 98. We made it to the World Series. Yeah. And, and, I, and I have high hopes for, for them as an as a, um, organization in the future. I think they're, they have a great farm system. And hopefully, uh, you know, if it's not this year, it's next year or whatever. But, um, yeah, I think they have all the tools in place to make a run at it. Did you already get your brown? I haven't. I haven't got it yet. I mean, well, when, uh, when the time comes and maybe I can make it out to a game, I'll buy one when I'm over there. No, definitely. It's, it's do you like the color change back? I love no, I love it. They should have done this years ago. They should have never changed them, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. I love the the yellow with the with the dark brown is is nice. I mean, that's something that you and uh, my friend over here, Chiva, share. Um, I've never played baseball. I, I okay. would play yeah. soccer all the time. Um, and I played baseball as a kid, PJ. Like, yeah. Years, but it was never my favorite sport. Okay. Yeah, it was like the <laughs> second sport the there. Huh? Me yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, man, uh, it's again, it's great that you guys are are still um, just staying connected with everybody and just doing interviews and telling the public. Is there anything that you'd like to tell, you know, San Diego, the public, anybody right now? Just the local. Yeah, just, you know, stay home, be safe. And uh, when the time comes, uh, hopefully this season, um, you know, make it out to a game and, and enjoy it because, uh I think these are times that we're not going to take for granted anymore. Just being able to kind of get outside your house and mingle with, you know, the ones next to you. And um, so, yeah, just, just try to hold out a little bit longer. It's not easy for everybody, but I think we're, we're doing our best and um, yeah. All right, man. Really appreciate it, Sal. Hopefully uh, once this all goes over, maybe we can have you in studio and by studio, I mean garage. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And uh, uh, hopefully we can see you guys out there real soon, man. Appreciate everything you've done for San Diego and the sport and bringing a team here, man. It was, yeah. it was thanks to uh, efforts by you and, and a, a lot of other people that have um, helped this actually come to fruition. 
Yeah. Um, and we, we're not going to let this movement die, man. Like we're, we're, yeah. we want this to happen and just like you guys do. And, um, again, really appreciate it, man. And hopefully we can have you back again in the future, man. Yeah. And thanks for having me on and thanks for doing what you guys are doing. Cause it's people like you that keep the word spread and, um, you know, keep it going. Like you guys said, you, you were all on a team to kind of grow this thing and, and grow this team and grow soccer in San Diego. So, uh, it's cool that you guys are doing this and, uh, keep it going. Definitely, man. Well, appreciate it, man. Have yourself right. a good day. And, you uh, too. Follow Sal. And uh, yeah. I want to give uh, your social media. Yeah, it's uh, just okay. at Sal Zizo on Twitter and I think the same on Instagram and whatnot. And uh, yeah. So Perfect. thank you, guys. Sounds good, All right, man. Thank you, man. All right. Take care, care guys. Appreciate one. it.